we've been learning about projectile motion problems and we've come to a couple of occasions where we have equations and variables where we have two unknowns and we need to try to solve that equation. So we've seen uh, already an example of this, but I didn't explicitly say that we were solving an equation with two unknowns. So for example, we've seen problems where if you're standing on a building that's 10 meters tall and you throw something horizontally off at a speed of 20 meters per second, And we ask how far away will that object land? We're solving for delta x. So if we make our list of the variables that we know and that we don't know, the acceleration in the x is zero. The initial velocity in the X is 20. The final velocity in the X will also be 20 because there is no acceleration in the X. Our Delta X is what we're trying to find. The acceleration in the Y is negative 9.8 meters per second squared due to gravity. The initial velocity in the Y is zero because we're launching our projectile horizontally. So there's no Y component to the initial velocity. We don't know what the final velocity in the Y direction is. And we know that Delta Y, which is Y final minus Y initial equals negative 10 meters. And then we also don't know the time that this is going to take. So if we write down all of our kinematic equations, And now uh, we do the same y direction. Now, if we wanted to find delta x and we look at our kinematic equations, we can't use the bottom one because it doesn't have delta x in it, so that wouldn't help us solve for it. We also can't use the second equation because the acceleration in the x is zero. And so multiplying by zero means that we won't be able to find any information about delta x. So we need to use this equation to solve for delta x. So if we picked this equation, we said the acceleration in the x was zero. And if we we already have delta x by itself. We said that the initial velocity was 20 meters per second, but now we don't know the time. So in this equation, there are two unknowns. So both the delta x and the t are unknowns. 
in mathematics, if you have an equation with two unknowns, you need to have at least two equations to solve for both of those. What we do to have another equation that has at least one of these unknowns in it is go into the y direction. So if we look at our y equations, uh, we want to find time so we could pick either the top y equation or the bottom y equation. But if we picked the bottom y equation, we don't know the final velocity in the y direction. So we would have two unknowns in that equation. So that doesn't help us. But if we pick the top equation, then we only have t as an unknown. So we can solve that equation for t. And then once we get that t, we can plug it into our equation in the x direction. So if we do that, The initial velocity in the y was zero. And then if we solve this for time, we would move the two over, the divide by one half is the same as multiplying by two. And then we would divide by the acceleration in the y. And then you would take the square root of that to solve for t. Now, uh, if you want to plug in your numbers, you, can, you would get two times negative 10 over negative 9.8. Or you could just plug this time directly into here. So if you do that, then multiplying everything together, give you your value for delta x. And you get about 28.57 meters. So that's one example of approaching a problem where you have two unknowns, and in this case, they were the delta x and the t, then we had to use a completely different equation to find that t, and then we plugged it back into the original equation that we were working on. So that's one example of how to solve an equation with two unknowns, but it's not always that easy. So another example is, say for example, that you are launching a projectile at an initial velocity At an initial velocity of 15 meters per second, and you wanted to hit some target that was 20 meters away from you, and let's say that the height that you were above your target was 2.4 meters. And we want to know at what angle would you need to launch this such that you hit that target 20 meters away. So if we write down the things that we know and the things that we don't know, x, y, the acceleration and the x is zero, 
acceleration of the y is your negative 9.8 due to gravity. The initial velocity in the x. So we, we need to break this 15 meters per second into components. Maybe I'll do that in different colors. So we'll do the x velocity in red, the blue velocity, or the y velocity in blue. Now, if you look at the, and we're given, or we're not given, but we want to find this angle theta. If you take the sine of theta, you're looking at the opposite over hypotenuse. So in our problem, that would be sine theta equals the initial y over 15. So your initial velocity in the y is 15 times sine of theta. And if we repeat that process in the x, we get an equation for the initial x component, which is v initial x equals 15 cosine theta. So that's our initial component of velocity in the x direction. The final velocity in the x is also going to be 15 cosine theta. And our delta x is 20 meters. The initial velocity in the y is 15 sine of theta. The final velocity in the x, or sorry, the final velocity in the y, we don't know. And the delta y is negative 2.4 meters. And we don't know how long this projectile will be in the air. So just like the last problem, if you look at your kinematic equations, you would select the following one to solve for delta x. Your acceleration on the x is zero, so that goes away. And now if you plugged in values for these variables, delta x is already by itself, and that's what we want to solve for. The initial velocity in the x was v initial, or was 15, cosine theta. And then you don't know the time. So if you follow the same process that we did last time, delta y equals the initial y t plus one half a y t squared. Your initial velocity in the y direction was 15 sine theta t. Your acceleration is negative 9.8. And your delta y was, oh, so I guess in this problem, we know what delta x is, sorry. That's 20. And then delta y is negative 2.4 meters. <laughs>
So if you look at this equation on the left, we don't know theta and we don't know T. So these are two unknowns. So that's why we wanted a second equation. But now if we look at the second equation that we could come up with, we still have the same two unknowns, theta and t. So this is not exactly the same as the last problem. However, because we have two unknowns in both equations, and we have two equations, we can solve this. So I'll show you one technique that you can use to solve these kinds of equations. And then I will uh, show some other examples with a different technique. So uh, to solve this, I'm going to do it in variables first. So I just wanted to plug the numbers in so you could see definitely what our unknowns were. Uh, but when I'm solving this, I'm going to leave it in variable form. And those are the equations that I'm going to be manipulating in a moment. So these are the equations that we're working with. Now a common technique, so our unknowns were t and theta. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve one of these equations for t. And then plug it into the second equation. So what that looks like, if I solve this equation on the left for t, then I would get t equals delta x over v initial x. Now I'm going to take that t and substitute it into the equation on the right wherever I see a t. So the new equation on the right looks like delta y equals v initial y t, or not t anymore. delta x over v initial x plus one half a y and then t squared and I'm replacing t with delta x over v initial x and then square that. So now if you plug your numbers in again, now that we've done all this manipulation, delta y was negative 2.4. The initial y was 20 or 15 sine theta. Delta x was 20 and the initial x is 15 cosine theta. Then 1 half times a is negative 4.9. Delta x is 20. And V initial X is 15 cosine theta squared. 
So if you multiply out all of these numbers, you would get the following, negative 2.4. The 15s would cancel, so you'd have 20. Then sine of theta over cosine of theta is tangent of theta. Then negative 4.9 times 20 squared divided by 15 squared, negative 8.71. And then over cosine squared theta. So now if you look at this equation, there's only one unknown and that's theta. It's, it so happens that this unknown is inside of different trigonometric functions. And so it's going to take a little bit of extra work to solve this problem. Uh, but typically, uh, once you've gotten to this point, it's usually fairly simple to solve for the remaining unknown. Uh, but in this case, it, like I said, it's going to take a little more work because we have these trig functions. So we're going to use the following identities that uh, one over cosine is secant squared, is just secant of theta. And then secant squared equals one plus tangent squared of theta. So if we look at our equation, we have negative 2.4 equals 20 tangent theta minus 8.71 over cosine squared theta. So I'm going to use that first relationship to turn 1 over cosine squared of theta into uh, secant squared theta. 4 is 20 tan theta minus 8.71 secant squared theta. Now I can replace the secant squared theta with 1 plus tangent squared theta. So if you distribute this 8.71 to both of these terms, you would get a 20 tan theta minus 8.71 minus 8.71 tangent squared theta. If I add the 8.71 to the other side, I would have 6.31 on this side. Now we're going to do another trick. So because this is now quadratic in terms of tangent of theta, I'm going to use a substitution to say that Let's say W equals tangent of theta. So tangent squared theta equals W squared. And the reason that I'm going to do that now is now if I make that substitution, this is just a regular 
quadratic equation. So you would solve this quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Okay. So first we'll get everything onto the same side. So I'm gonna add the 8.71 to the other side. That means we subtract the 20. plus the 6.1 equals zero. So now your quadratic formula is negative the first or the second term plus or minus the square root of the second term squared minus four times the first coefficient 8.71 6.31 all over two times the first coefficient. Now, if you plug that into your calculator, you would have the answer for W. So if you plug that into your calculator, you get 20 plus or minus 13.5. 4, 2 over 17.42. And then we remember that W was tangent of theta. Or I guess. So now you'll see that there's this plus or minus in here. So that means we're gonna actually have two solutions for W. So W, if we take the positive uh, sign would be 20 plus 13.42 over 17.42, which equals One point nine two, or we could have taken the negative root twenty minus thirteen point four two divided by seventeen point four two. And that gives you 0 0.37 or 0 0.38 if we round. Okay, so now we have two values of W and we'll remember that W equals tangent of theta. So what we have is tangent of theta equals 1.92 or tangent of theta equals 0 0.37. So if you want to find theta, you would take the inverse tangent of these two options. And when you plug that into your calculator, you get the following solutions. 62.49 degrees or 20 point, this was supposed to be eight. Twenty point eight degrees, eight one degrees. So what this is telling us is that 
if we think back to our original problem, so if this is our horizontal, we can either launch at an angle of 62 degrees above the horizontal, or we could launch at a shallower angle of 20.8 degrees. So this was kind of a long and intense problem, uh, but the main takeaway here uh, should be uh, this kind of general problem solving skill of if you have two equations and two unknowns, if you look back here, uh, we had the two unknowns, theta and t. And if you solve one equation for one of your variables, in this case, we decided to solve the left equation for t, then you can plug that variable into uh, the second equation and replace it with what you solved for. And eventually, uh, you can arrive at a solution. So that's one technique for solving problems where you have two equations and two unknowns. So that would be a system of equations. You can solve for one unknown using the first equation. And then substitute that in to the second equation. Another technique uh, that might work depending on the type of problem you're doing, uh, let's do a simpler example. Uh, so let's say you had this equation, two equals x plus y. And then maybe five equals three X plus four Y. Now, if we solve it uh, the same way we did the first, let's say we solve that X equals two minus Y. We can plug that X into the second equation we would have five equals three times two minus y plus four y. So this would be five equals six minus three y plus four y. Subtract the six to the other side, you would get minus one. And then minus three plus four y is just plus one y. So you get y equals negative one. We wanted to solve for x, we would plug it, uh, we would plug this value for y back into our original equation. So two equals x minus one. And then we get the solution for x, that x equals three. So that's using the same technique that I described earlier. And the other technique is to yeah. to think about how I could 
add or subtract these equations such that I can eliminate one of the variables. For example, if I multiply this top equation by three or negative three, I would have negative six equals negative three X minus three Y. And if I add that to the other equation, you see that your X terms cancel and you're left with negative one equals y. And then you would do the same process to uh, plugging this back into the original equation to solve for x. Or I could have got chosen to get rid of the y's. So let's say I multiply the top equation by negative four instead. So negative four times this equation would be negative eight equals negative four X minus four Y and five equals three X plus four Y. So we see that we get our Y's to cancel negative eight plus five is negative three. And then negative four X plus three X is negative one X. And so we get X equals three. And if we compare that to what we had before, uh, we see that we get the same results. Uh, so that's just another way of solving systems of equations where you have two equations and two unknowns. And as you scale uh, with more unknowns, you would need more equations. For example, if you have three unknowns, then you would need three equations. And this whole uh, process, uh, this whole mathematical idea is explored more fully in linear algebra, uh, where you're solving these systems of equations. But uh, in physics, we sometimes need to use those kind of uh, higher level math to solve our problems. And so these are a couple of examples of how to do that. I, in physics, I would favor the first method I showed you, where you solve one of your equations for one variable and then plug it into the other one. Because as you saw, uh, for example, we had these trig functions, sine and cosine running around, and that made it so that uh, simplifying that equation was a bit harder to do. 